What's up everybody, it's your boy Reggie Casual. I mean, you gotta give it to Virgil. He has a way of bringing together collaborative efforts you'd never see coming. It just comes out of nowhere. If anything, love him or hate him, you cannot deny his attempt to make fashion more of a symbiotic thing across a variety of genres. Such is the case with the latest reveal of the LV collab with Human Made by the legendary Nigo. So we're gonna go ahead and talk about it. Here are seven things that are freaking awesome about the Louis Vuitton and Human Made upcoming collaboration. Let's get it. All right, so first things first, Virgil's forays into tailoring in the last Louis Vuitton mainline collection are certainly felt in this collaboration. But it's good to know that Nigo was actually on the same wavelength here. He was completely on board. According to an interview, Virgil was so gung-ho about going in an unexpected direction with the collaboration that Nigo, a frequent Seville Road customer, was on board the minute that he talked about it. And what we get is a recognizable yet amazing fusion that speaks to both the classic nature of European design and the bravery of Japanese. It's like it's classy without being stuffy, fun without being too childlike. It's not for everyone, but everyone could pull it off. That's a very fine line, but it does do those things. And one of my personal favorites in the collaboration is the LV bag with the ice cream drip, drip. Now, when I say ice creams, I'm not just talking about ice cream that you eat, but the ice cream brand that Nigo did with Pharrell back in the day. That was intentional. But if you're unfamiliar with ice cream, that is cool. Just know that the bag was influenced from a label that was done way back in the day. It is everything street and LV, and it takes all the necessary chances that make it the ultimate collector's item for those with heavy pockets, which ain't me, at least not yet. I don't have heavy pockets like that, but it is a dope bag. But more on the bags later because the entire collection is kind of tough and it's great at pulling together that youthful vibe and that classic vibe that this collection is obviously going for. Nigo actually came up with the LV squared or whatever the heck you call it, but this was all Nigo and he loves doing this. It, basically he signals out what he's a part of by branding the entire collaboration rather than just saying, oh, this is human made and Louis Vuitton, it's LV squared. And this is something that Nigo is known for doing. He did it with United Arrows and Sons when he went under the moniker Nigo Gold. The only difference is, is that this collab seems to be a one-off for now, an emphasis on the for now. If we can get an LV squared tag on future projects, that is a hell of a win for human made Louis Vuitton and Virgil and fashion as a whole on so many fronts. If somehow perhaps LV ends up going the Montclair genius route, and takes the LV squared branding towards different designers giving their take on Louis Vuitton classic with Virgil and Nigo providing art direction, that would be incredibly cool. Or just Virgil himself, that would still be cool. The possibilities are just delicious to think about. Just a while back, Virgil was trounced for saying that streetwear was dead, and he has since clarified his remarks, doing his due diligence, of course. But this human-made Louis Vuitton collab puts that comment into perspective. Streetwear as a concept is a fluid thing. Like hip hop, it goes through fusions, stages, and transformations. And via this collab, you can clearly see those influences over time. Quite simply, streetwear, if you wanna call it that, has grown up, venturing into territory that was once seen as taboo by street standards. Virgil revealed that streetwear in and of itself can grow beyond its populist roots and actually add to the conversation of fashion in general. It isn't separate is the basic point. And by doing this collab, you can see immediately those influences from street with this playful and youthful tone, but you can also see that it's not the primary focus, which is great because it proves that fashion isn't a static idea across genres. Like why can't streetwear or street fashion be in the same conversation as contemporary deconstruction? just for example. But the point is simply not that the people who indulge in street wear as we have it have grown up, not just them, but the genre itself has grown up. And this collab is done so elegantly that it proves that point. But even beyond that, you could see where this conversation is going. This is the part where I rail on how Japanese street fashion as a whole and fashion in general have been on the sidelines of the discussion for years. Sure, most of you out there probably know of Bape, Comme des Garçons, Yoji Yamamoto, Undercover, 
Good handful of you know Issei Miyake, but the platform for Japanese fashion has been sorely lacking outside of publications like Hypebeast and occasionally High Stability and every now and then Complex. And as much as we like to fill the void here on the casual, it simply isn't enough. And quite honestly, we aren't big enough to create that much of an impact, maybe one day. But an LV collab with Human Made does put Japanese fashion front and center once again. In that same interview with Virgil, the interviewer literally states that when they think of Japanese fashion, they think of denim, which blows my mind because that's a lazy interpretation of Japanese fashion. And anyone doing an interview about Japanese contributions to fashion or Japanese brand collaborating with Louis Vuitton should have known that or at least studied with all due respect. But Virgil correctly points out in the interview that the contributions that Japan has had on Americana workwear and streetwear catapulted these genres into new heights. Beyond just denim, there is a process of detail and precision that the Japanese are known for, something we try to highlight right here. Thank you, Virgil. It's not so much that we have a bias towards Japanese fashion, I like to point that out. It's just that it's largely ignored. And that's why this collab is amazing. It shines a light on that more that we all should study if we are truly passionate about fashion design and style. Far too often, we have individuals who stay in that European corner and just say that's the only thing that matters when there's an entire world of art, of design, of fashion that we should be paying attention to. And you have to give kudos to Virgil for shining a light on that even just a little bit. But with all that said, this collab is just fresh, <laughs> right? It's, it's cool. It's playful, it's wearable, and it's an ode to two genres of fashion that works in a symbiotic nature. It's amazing. Would I wear it personally? That all depends. The bombers are lovely. I already went crazy over the bags. The checkered tailor suits are a bit crispy, too crispy for me, but the plain Janes are butter. The denim tops are definitely worth a look. The denim bottoms are very human made, but not all the way to my liking. Human made has never really been like my number one brand, it's a brand that I respect. Overall, the vision is on point for a variety of styles and it's not too off the rocker with its Wingstop Ivy League styles as well. And let's go ahead and rewind it back. The bags, I don't care what anybody says. The bags are dope, all of them. I'm a fan of the bags, but LV has always been something that I kind of avoided when it comes to bags because it's just typical. But these are amazing. As mentioned before, the ice cream accent on the shoulder bag is just butter, it's just great. But the backpack totes, Coach and Boston are probably going to be calling for my wallet. I probably won't buy it. I probably won't, but they'll be calling that wallet for sure. I can't really give you any technical words to describe how unique but familiar these bags are, but they are amazing. The LV squared branding, the fact that this may be a one-off, it's definitely a good look for fans who got the cash who are looking for something limited. And if you are that fan, do me a favor and buy one of these take a picture, send it to me so I can just dream that I have it so I don't have to buy it because I don't even want to know how much it's going to cost. It's probably going to be like, it's going to be LV prices plus the collaboration price. So it's going to be pretty, it's going to be pretty expensive. So that's our take on it. Those are seven things that are amazing about this collaboration, but I'm sure there are some of you out there that may feel differently. So Tell us what you think about the Louis Vuitton human made collaboration. Do you agree with the points made here or you don't? Let those be known in the comments. Give a thumbs up if you like the video. Follow on Instagram for the latest out of Japan and beyond. But most importantly, keep it locked right here for all of your info on international street fashion and culture from Tokyo. It's your boy and keep it casual. And now, Japanese lesson time. We're, st we're still going, we're still doing it. Today, it's about pronunciation. Now, pronunciation in Japanese is not difficult, but it relies heavily on context. For example, I taught you guys the word Jordan, like Jordan sneakers, that is Jordan. Jordan has to be said like Jordan, or it sounds like another word entirely. For example, listen to these three words. Jordan, 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 Jordan. Jodan. Those are three different words. So you gotta be very careful, especially when you're talking about the long pronunciation and shorter pronunciation. There are certain words that sound very similar that you could get wrong if you're not paying attention. For example, there's a famous word that all Japanese speakers come to know and love, especially when you're learning the language. That is kite, 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 kite. 
Yeah, those are all different words. You can say kite kudasai, which means please come here. Kite kudasai, which means please wear this. You can say kite, kite kudasai, which means please cut it. You could say kite, which means a stamp, like a literal like stamp that you put on a letter. And then you could have kite, kite kudasai, which means please uh, listen. You have to be very, very mindful of the context of what you're talking about. So don't be afraid of this. I'm just giving you that so you understand that there is complexities. There's many different layers to Japanese. It's not as simple as just putting words together. Sometimes you have to pay real attention to how you say the words uh, so you can actually know what you're talking about. Because you don't want to be in a situation where you're like, Jodan, and you're supposed to say, Jodan. If you have any questions, let me know. Do something else. In any case, see you guys in a minute.